Hello, G and J. We are coming to you today from the last day of General Conference. As you can see all around us, General Conference is beginning to shut down and tear down the exhibit hall and people are getting last minute pictures with their delegation. Uh, we just wanted to give you some updates about some of the great things and the great work that we've been doing um, and the great work we did today. Drew, tell me a little bit about your your yeah, experience so, today. Uh, tearing down the exhibit hall and building up the church is what we're all about today. So one of the first things that happened today was establishing the bishops for uh, the next quadrennium in the United States. And so uh, the Interjurisdictional Episcopacy Committee recommended and the, the General Conference accepted that there will be 32 bishops, uh, six who will serve in the Northeast jurisdiction. Uh, so we're not sure how that will be filled, either by transfer most likely uh, of a bishop to the Northeast from somewhere else in the country or by election. We won't know for the next few weeks when the Interjurisdictional Committee does our work. Absolutely. So I think a couple of the other things, we're still continuing to work on uh, removing harmful language from the discipline and uh, some final petitions there, establishing a budget for the next quadrennium, as we've talked about before, a budget that is, uh, you know, we believe is um, helpful for the local church, but also continuing to establish who we are as a denomination. Uh, one of the things I think is most significant about today is we added uh, part one of our missional strategies as a denomination, the elimination of uh, okay. racism, eradicating racism, eradicating racism, colonialism, patriarchy. Is there one more? I think it was, uh, yeah, I think that was it. Okay. Uh, maybe was, one more, but. It might have been one more, but those were three um, of the ones that really stuck with us. You know, it was really an interesting vote. You know, when we're talking about the eradication of racism within the church, to see people vote against eradicating racism in the church. Um, as a mother of two biracial children um, and person who is of Korean descent, I, we experience racism on a regular basis and to see the church still has a way to go to really be inclusive of um, and be a global church. Yeah. So as we think about the General Conference as a whole, I would love to know for you, what are your three best things that we did as a General Conference? That, that is really hard for me to choose. Like, how can you ask me to, like, to choose three different? There has been so many wonderful things. Passing the revised social principles, that's huge. I was part of the writing team, one of the writing teams that worked on um, revising the social principles and I was really passionate about that work. So that was really a big one for me. Another one was removing harmful language from um, the Book of Discipline. You know, I know it'll be a constitutional amendment that'll have to be ratified, correct? Regionalization. Regionalization, well. But I'm just excited that, you know, we can go back and really say to um, folks in Greater New Jersey, we've accomplished something. We've really worked hard together. And I also feel like there was a lot of, um, joy and happiness within this um, general conference, which is not something that we have necessarily experienced in all ways um, for myself since being on, you know, uh, general conference delegation since 2012. So, yeah, we've served together now in our fourth general conference yeah. together. Our first time as seatmates, uh, side was by best. side. Uh, we had a great time together. Um, but this definitely, there was a different spirit. There was a joy. There was a... a uh, excitement about the way we were building a church that is truly open for all people. There was a commitment uh, to work together. Yeah. There was definitely a commitment to work together. I think one of the other things, in addition to the things that we've talked about, removing harmful language, the regionalization, the revision of the social principles, we uh, gave sacramental authority to deacons. Yeah. And as the spouse of a deacon, knowing uh, someone who does work in a hospital setting, where you're often called on to do that critical work. Uh, this is something I want to give a shout out to a couple people, especially uh, Vicki Miller Brenler started this work back in 2012. Uh, and she started working on how can we give sacramental authority to deacons? And we've made progress over the years. Uh, so this really is uh, with thanks to people like Vicki who have started this work and uh, really brought it home uh, at this general conference where deacons have that sacramental authority. It's been really great to see um, Greater New Jersey folks 
stepping up into leadership in a variety of ways as vice chairs, as people coming to the microphone and speaking. And, you know, I want, my hope is to continue to um, feed into younger generations of our conference to have them be a part of this. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, this, I was raised in Greater New Jersey. I was, de my leadership skills were developed in Greater New Jersey. And, you know, I can't wait to continue to pass on what I, the knowledge that I have to others within Greater New Jersey. Yeah. I was born into a parsonage family at Princeton United Methodist Church uh, in 1973, the year after the harmful language was put into the Book of Discipline uh, about, uh, you know, people being of sacred worth, but homosexuality being incompatible with Christian teaching. My entire life, that's been the teaching of the United Methodist Church. Uh, we've worked hard and long to remove that language, and I give thanks to God that we finally did, uh, so that other children born into parsonage families, into United Methodist families, into our communities of faith, know that they have a place. So that's exciting for me. Uh, but as we think about prayer requests, just uh, I would ask for prayers for safe travel for the delegation. Uh, also just prayers for the restore, restoring of energy. We are tired, y'all. It's been a long couple weeks. Uh, and so there's some exhaustion setting in, some giddiness at the table, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's we'll getting hard on this time. last day. Um, so we'll prayers for, for, for travels, for energy, and then prayers for our church, uh, the church that we are becoming. And I think that's an important thing for all of you in greater New Jersey. Uh, we wanna be a home where all people can uh, come and find themselves in relationship with Jesus Christ. And find a way to live in relationship, with live in the another. tension. Cause there are, you know, we don't all think yep. alike and that's okay. Like right. that's how we grow. That's how we learn. We stretch by not being exact replicas of one another, right? And I think that that is one of the beautiful things about Greater New Jersey, that we still live in that tension and that we're gonna continue to love through that tension and work together through that tension. So Greater New Jersey, once again, thank you for all of your prayers, all of your support, all of the gifts that you sent to keep us well fed at the, at the tables and in the exhibit hall. Uh, all the things, though, all the ways that you contributed to this general conference. It's an historic thing for our denomination, and it's not because of uh, only the delegates in the hall. It's because of who we are as a church. It's because of you, and so we're grateful for all that you've been and all that we will be together as we move into the future. We can't wait to see you in Wildwood and connect with you. And two weeks from now, see you soon.